My name is Michael Anderson, and I'm not what you'd call a Rhodes Scholar. I don't have much in the way of philosophy either, but I know one thing. In this world, you have to pay as you go. Sometimes, all you have. That's a lesson I thought I learned nine years ago during what folks in these parts call the storm of the century. But I was wrong. I only started learning during the big blow. I finished just last week. I grew up in Maine. But in a way, I never really lived in Maine. I think anyone from my part of the world would say the same. Folks from Little Tall sent their taxes to Augusta, same as other folks. And we got either a lobster or a loon on our license plate, same as other folks. We root for the University of Maine's team, especially the women's basketball team, same as other folks. Hey, Sonny, you forgot one. One for the pot, good luck. Better double it, Sonny. That weatherman says it's coming on. Seen them come in every winter. They howl in, they howl out. July always comes. Still, they say this one's gonna be something special. But we ain't the same. Life out on the islands is different. We pull together when we have to. We'll get through it. Yeah, like always. When you mind the swell, you mind the boat. But with a Frenchman like you know. Daniel. <laughs> and we can keep a secret when we have to. We kept our share back in 1989. And the people who live there keep them still. I know. I stay in touch. was a big storm coming, would you? I just pray we don't lose the power. Radio says it's gonna snow a bit. Oh, easy, Ferd. It's just a cap of snow. <sighs> Trouble don't cross the reach. Ain't that why we live here? Yeah. Well, we get in trouble, we're in trouble. Yes, as it crossed the Great Plains in the Midwest. And you see its track before you in all its glory. Now look down here because, folks, here comes trouble. This is a very atypical storm, almost a winter hurricane. It's the sort of knuckle duster that paralyzed most of the East Coast and buried Boston back in 1976. The first person on Little Tall to see Andre Linoge was Martha Clarendon. was also the last person she ever saw. Now, we haven't seen one of comparable power since then until now. Will it give us a break and stay out to sea as these storms sometimes do? Unfortunately, the Weather Network <sighs> storm track computer says no. Oh so the state east of the big end. Now, northern New England, if none of this changes tonight, you are going to win the booby prize. Look at this. 
Now, if neither of these two systems veer, they're going to collide oh, and burn over the state dear. of Maine. That is bad news for our friends in Yankee land. We're talking hurricane force winds and phenomenal amounts of snow. To this, you can add region-wide blackouts. Now, no one wants oh, to hear this, but folks in New England air... Days, you're apt to be getting a whole winter's worth of snow. Now, we sometimes overuse the phrase storm of the century, but if these two storm tracks converge, as we now think they will, the phrase will be no exaggeration, believe me. Judd Parkin is in next to talk about storm preparation. No panic here, just practicality. First, this. Oh. Unexpected to hit Banger last night is not necessarily When they tell you the world's coming to an end, they want to sell you cereal. And they tell you not to panic. It's serious. Oh, hold on. I'm getting there as fast as I can. I broke my hip last summer, and I'm still as slow as cold molasses. Can I help you? Born in lust, turn to dust. I beg your pardon? Born in sin, come on in. That's number one. Want to say to yourself, how are my batteries? Have I got enough to keep a portable radio going? Possibly a small TV. And if you have a generator, time to check your gasoline supplies or your diesel. Pot short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, hear me shout. Just tip me over and pour me out. Which is the cataclysmic powers of Earth, or is it the punishments of God? Now, for the first time anywhere, punishments of God's of me. 90 minutes of terror unlike anything you've ever seen before. Cash, check, or money order for $19.95 to Punishments of God, P.O. Box 111, Bangor, Maine. Do it now, before it's too late. Don't forget the bean supper next Wednesday week, Michael. I'm going to need every deacon I can lay my hand on. I'll be there. If we get to the next three days, I guess. I'm sure we will. God takes care of his own. Michael, I thought for sure you'd still have pork chops. There you go. Ground chops, too, dear. Don't you have any plain old hamburger, Michael Anderson? Yep. Right. Here. Okay, folks, listen. It's a storm. That's all. We've gotten through plenty of these before, and we'll get through plenty after. So everyone, hey, calm down. Stop acting like mainlanders. No. Oh. Be smart, Mike Madison. No, Miss St. Pierre, I won't be smart. Yeah? Ho hold on just a second. Mike, hey, hey, Mike, it's you got a call. It's your wife. She says she's got a little problem down at the daycare center. Uh-oh. Is she hot under the collar? How do I know where she's hot? She's your wife. Hatch, want to take over for me? Yo, Mike, hey, can I borrow your whipping chair? Let's go see about that, huh, Mike? Hey, Ma, what's up? Uh, I got a little problem here. Can you come? Well, uh, I got a little problem of my own, hon. What's yours? Pippa got her head. Can I have your bread if you're not gonna eat it? No! Yeah. Uh, Pippa, Pippa, honey, don't do that. Just hold still. Annie, keep her calm. Okay. Pippa, what about Pippa? Oh, shh, please, quiet. The last thing in the world I want is Alton Hatcher coming down on me. Something about Pippa. Oh, it's too late, babe. Uh, what's up? Pippa's got her head stuck in the stairs. It's not serious, I don't think, but... I can't deal with a big storm and a crazed daddy all the same day. If, uh, 
patch comes, you be with them. Uh, yeah, all right. I'll, I'll be down. Goodbye. What about Pippa? Uh, she's got a little stuck itis I hear. Let's go see. But just like this when I was in the scouts. How upset does she sound, Mike? Molly? How oh, about 0.5 on a scale from 1 to 10? Don't worry. This is going to be one bad mother of a storm. Mike and your daddy will be here in another minute, and Mike will get you out. I'm hungry. Can I feed her, Mrs. Anderson? I fed a monkey once at the Banger Fair. I'm not a monkey, Harry. Hey, look, you guys, I'm a monkey. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you can stop it. Stop it right now. It's not nice. It's making Pippa sad. Don, you stop. It's me. Still, your Yankee is right off your head. Daddy! Oh, hey there. Pippa got her head stuck, and Don won't stop being a monkey. Mr. Anderson, I stop being a monkey as soon as she says. Well, that's great, Sally. I gotta put you down, Ralphie. Hey, hey, hey. Ow, hey, why'd you do that? You're acting smart. I ain't afraid of you. My dad's sound manager. He pays your salaries. Pushers get pushed. Donnie Beals, you remember that. It's a true fact of this sad life. Pushes get pushed. Honey, why, why did you do this? How do you seem here, dear me? What happened, darling? It was easy going out, but now I can't get back in. I think my head must be bigger on this side. Well, it is. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make it smaller. You know how? No. How? I'm going to push your smaller button. Then your head will get smaller, and it'll slide out just as easy as it slid in. You understand, Peppa? <laughs> I'm gonna push your button now, okay? You ready? Mm -hmm. Close your eyes. Here we go. Beep! Zoop. Okay, your head's getting smaller. Now pull it out before oh. it gets big. There you go. Yay! Yay! Thank you. Thank you. Really. No problem. I'm sorry if I called you away to bad times. I saw a head like that when I couldn't get it to come out on my own. I just freaked. Uh, I needed a break anyway. <laughs> The smaller button, huh? Everyone's got one. <laughs> Davy Hopewell in transition. He avoids the press. Stockton tries to steal the ball, but he doesn't have a chance. It's Davy Hopewell at the top of the key. Clock running out. Davy Hopewell's the Celtics' only hope. He shakes, he big he. This is 
Clarendon? It's Davy. Davy Hopewell? Are you all right? Hello? Anybody here? NBA, Davy. You'll never even play first string in high school. You're slow. You're a dwarf. Why don't you come on in here, Davy? I'll do you a favor, save you a no! lot of grief. Help! 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 Somebody kill Mrs. Clarendon! Help! Somebody help! Mrs. Clarendon's dead! Help! David Hopewell, what are you doing running down the middle of the road making a spectacle of yourself? Someone killed Mrs. Clarendon. That's nonsense. What are you talking about? There's blood everywhere and one of her eyes is out. Baby, it's... just calm down. It's on her cheek. Mrs. Kingsbury, you look after him. Give him a hot tea or better yet, give him some whiskey if you have any. Are you going to tell Mike Anderson? Well, not until I've had a look myself. First, there's more than one thing that a town manager can do, you know. You want help, Robbie Beals? No, that won't be necessary, George. I'll be fine. Careful, Mr. Beals. I think the guy's still in the house. Come in? No, I'm fine. It was. Thanks for seeing after my little girl. My pleasure. comes to that. Two shorts and one long, that's right. Mike Anderson, of course. Those are the decisions we pay him to make, aren't they, dear? Yeah, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll say hello to Peter for you. Thanks. Thanks for calling, Betty. Tough day, huh? Betty Soames seems to think we have access to some secret forecast. Some kind of Gene Dixon psychic weather forecast? I guess, yeah. Or has most people in town seen this stuff? If they're not blind, they've seen it. You need to relax, Mike Anderson. How's little Pippa Hatcher? Whoa. 
That was fast. No secrets on the island. She's fine. She she got her head stuck in the stairs. <laughs> Dad's outside in the car right now. He's doing his homework for the big blow of 89. Ain't that just like Alton and Melinda Hatch's daughter? Perfect. People know this one's bad, Mike. If they hear the siren, they'll come. You needn't worry about that. Now, you came to look at the emergency shelter set up, didn't you? Thought it might not be a bad idea. We can handle 300 for three days, 150 for a week. If what I'm hearing on the radio is right, we may have to. Anybody here? of thousands of dollars waiting for you. So don't wait. Call now. Pick up the phone and dial 1-800-1-STICKER. That's 1-800-1-STICKER. Get what's coming to you. Oh my God. Haven't you been through it? Good? You know it is. How's the supply closet? Full, just like you want it. Concentrates mostly. Pour the water over the powder and then gag it down. But nobody will starve. Did you do all this yourself? Yeah, me and Pete's sister Tavia. Be discreet, you said. Don't panic anyone. Yeah, that's what I said. So, how many people know we're stocked for World War III? Everyone. in sin come on in you were with a whore in Boston when your mother died in Machias Ma was in that crappy old nursing home they tore down last fall the one where they found the rats in the pantry right she choked to death calling your name isn't that sweet that's all right Robbie she's waiting for you in hell and she's turned cannibal when you get there, she's going to eat you alive over and over and over again. Because that's what hell is all about, Robbie. Repetition. I think in our hearts, most of us know that. Catch. by the oncoming storm. The forecast calls for destruction tonight, death tomorrow, and Armageddon by the weekend. This could be the end of life as we know it. Seems unlikely, but we can always hope. And we're back in just a moment. Stay with us. This is Robbie Beals for Constable Anderson. Come back. Back there, Anderson, we got a murder down here. Martha Glendon, the Come back, Anderson. Can you hear me? He's always in the room when it comes to unwanted advice. Where is he? Robbie, this is Tess Marchant. I don't want you. I want Anderson. I can't do his job. Mine as well. He had an emergency at home. Alton went with him. What do you mean an emergency at home? We got an emergency right here. We got an old woman murdered. We got a, a lunatic in Martha Glandon's living room. I What's he talking about? Who's murdered? Martha, he says. Robbie, I'm here. Just a minute. You folks, back off now. Give me a little privacy. Give me 6000 a year to be constable. Let me do the job you pay me for. 
Where are you, Robbie? Come back. Where am I? I'm at Martha Clarendon's house. Where do you think I am? I'm, I'm keeping the man inside at bay. Now you get your ass down here. Let's take another ride, all right? You and Kat mind the store. All right, folks, just stay here and finish your shopping, all right? There's nothing you can do down on Atlantic Avenue. Snow early. Look at there, the mainland. Can't see over there no more. It's time to get in while you can. Can't even see the reach no more. Time to head down to the town hall. Whether you've heard the siren or not. Shotgun? Yeah, better have it. Just make sure that safety's on, Alt Hatcher. Well, it's about time. Put that thing away. No such thing, Constable. You do your job, I'll do mine. Your job is real estate. Want to at least lower it, please? Come on, Robbie, it's in my face. And I know it's loaded. All right, now what happened? Well, I was... I was driving over to the town office as I saw Davy Hopewell just running down the middle of the street screaming that Martha Clarendon's instead and that somebody killed her. So I came on down here and it's true. She's... awful. The one that did it still inside? He spoke to me. What'd he say? told me to get out. He said, you get out or I'll kill you too. I don't know. This isn't the time for an interrogation. What do you look like? I barely got a look at him. All right, Hatch. You stay on my left, keep the barrel of that scattergun pointed toward the ground. Leave that safety on till I tell you to take it off. And you, you stay exactly where you are, please. You're the constable. I'd be careful if I was you. Even if there is a guy, he's probably gone out back by, by now, don't you think? Uh, she ain't got but a five-foot garden fence. Volcanic eruptions. Order now while you still have time. Send cash check or money order for 1995 to Punishments of God Part 2. P.O. Box 111, Bangor, Maine. That's Punishments of God. Oh my god. Oh god. Oh god, Mike, she's got no face left. Oh god. Hatch. Are oh, you gonna be alright? Hatch. Because if you're not, I want you to hand me that 12 gauge and go back out to Robbie. I'm okay. Sure. Oh, yeah. Raise your hands. Up over the chair. I want to see him clear as day. You got two guns pointed at you. One of them's a scatter. Put your hands together. Just stand back. This is 
under control. If he moves, shoot him. I, uh... If he shoots, he'll get us both. That thing's still loaded with buckshot. Also, he's still got the safety on. But you remember to wear gloves. That was good. On your feet. Patch, close the door. Is that wise? I mean, uh, uh, this being a crime scene at all, you think we should leave things the way they are? Leave the door open. The crime scene's gonna be under six feet of fresh powder. Now close the door. Hold on. What's your name? Andre Linoge. All right, let's go. trying to reach you for almost 10 minutes. Well, I've mostly been out on the porch sending kids over to their parents. I sent them home early. What's up, Katrina? Well, I don't want, want you to be scared or anything, but we got word that there's been a murder on the island. Old Martha Clarendon. Mike and Hatch just went over there. Wait, wait, wait are you sure? <laughs> well, I'm not really sure about anything right now. You know, this place has been a madhouse all day. They just went over there, and Mike wanted me to call you just to let you know that everything's under control. Is it? Yeah, probably. Anyway, he just, he wanted me to call you before anyone else did. So if, if you see Melinda Hatcher... Um, she, uh, she, she just left here with a Angie Carver. They're carpooling. Uh, uh, you can reach, reach them at home in 15 minutes or so, but you, well, you better make that 20. Look, there's some... Um, there's no chance I, I, this is, I, I don't know, some kind of a joke or, or a prank? No. Robbie Beals called it in and he doesn't exactly do humor, you know? Yeah, I know. He said that the person who did this might still be there. And I, I don't, I don't know if Mike would want me to tell you that, but I just, I thought you had the right to know. Molly. I'm coming down to the store. If Mike gets there before I do, you tell him to stay put. I don't think that he'd want Thanks, you to. Thanks, Kat. Hey, Ralphie, honey. Let's go down to the market and see your daddy, huh? What do you say? Daddy, yay! Yay. Let's get you dressed. What, are you going to put him in there? Not unless you want to get in the back seat with him and babysit. Get in there, mister. Put that down. Remember what I said, Robbie? Hell is repetition. He talks a lot of nonsense. A 
I think he's crazy. How do you know your name? You tell him? I don't know, but I do know that no sane person would want to hurt Martha Clarendon. All right, I'll... I'll come over to the store with you and help you clear this up. We're gonna have to get in touch with the state police. Robbie, I know this goes against your grain, but you're gonna have to let me handle this. I am the town manager here, in case you forgot. I've got responsibility. Yeah, so do I. And they're clearly divided in the town charter. Right now, Ursula needs a lot more over at the town hall than I need you at the constables. Come on, Hatch. Listen here, you're getting a little big for your britches. gonna do with him? Keep your voice down. We'll uh, have to try and raise the state police barracks in Machias. Probably was right about that much. But uh, what are the chances I'll take him off our hands in this? Hatch, um, when we were in the hall, I heard the TV on, did you? At first, yeah, the weather. Then, then the guy must have... Uh, It was busted. Busted all the hell and gone. He didn't do it while we were in the hallway either. You bust a TV picture to him, it makes it sound like poof. You know, we would have heard it. Must have been the radio. the other side. You want me to leave you out here alone with him? Let's have to see Superman hanging out in the alley. Maybe we could bring him around the front? Through the store? With everyone doing their storm shopping? I don't think so. Go on now.
What happened, Beals? Is Martha really dead? She's dead, all right. You haven't heard from him? I haven't heard from him. Hatch. Hi, Molly. Where's Mike? Is he all right? Oh, he's fine. He's out back with a prisoner. I just have to let him in. Is he a local? I never saw him before in my life. What are they doing out back? Give me what I want and I'll go away. What is it you want? I did. Then wail on it. It's probably ice stuck in the jam. Yeah. Let me. Anderson! You're gonna have to come around and take him into the store. Hatch? Yeah. Come around. Alone. Right now. Remember what I said, Mr. Anderson. And when the time comes, we'll talk. Mike wants you folks to, uh, to move back on both sides. No one in aisle two. Uh, we've got us a bad guy and we can't bring him in through the back door like we'd like to, so uh, go ahead, move back and give us some room. Why'd he kill her? How could you just move back, Pete? Uh, Mike's been standing out there in the snow and his feet are pretty cold by now. Also, we'll all feel much better once we uh, get this guy locked up, so uh, just move back and uh, give us a clear way up that second aisle. Not one wrong move, Mr. Lenoge. You mind me now. Mike? Straight down the aisle. Nowhere else. Come on, let's go. Peter Godzo. My favorite seafood wholesaler standing shoulder to shoulder with my favorite politician. How's the fish business? Not so good, is it? Lucky you've got the marijuana business to fall back on. How many bales have you got wrapped up in the warehouse right now? Ten? Twenty? Forty? Better be sure you got it wrapped up good, Pete. There's gonna be a hell of a storm surge tonight when the tide comes high. Come on, move! Cat Withers. You're looking well. And why not? It's just an in-office procedure these days, nothing to it. I don't suppose you've told your folks about it yet, or Billy. Move. Or I'm 
I'll move you. My advice would be go ahead. What's a little scrape between friends these days? Ralphie? <laughs> I know you. You do? You're Ralph Emmerich Anderson, and I know something else. What? You've got a fairy saddle on your nose. That's what my daddy calls it. You bet. And speaking of your daddy... Why are you wearing those? <sighs> because I choose to. Go on. Go see your dad. Get him out of here! Get him out of here! Don't shoot him, Daddy! He knows about the fairy saddle! I'm not gonna shoot him. Not if he goes where he's supposed to. Hey! Hey! What do you know about Katrina? How do you know about that? Get away from him! This man's a killer! Stay out of his way, Billy Songs. Stay out of mine, too. Also, clean yourself up. Before he gets too self-righteous, Katrina, ask him how well he knows Jenna Freeman. What do you know about my sister? That horses aren't all she enjoys riding when the weather's hot. Right, Billy? Keep away from this man, all of you. Mr. Lenert. Put your hands up and grab the bars. Now spread your legs. Wider. I'm gonna pat you down. If you move, my good friend Alton Hatch is gonna save us all a lot of trouble. Don't even twitch, Mr. Lenert. You put your filthy hands on my son, so don't you so much as twitch. Don't you tell me to take it easy. Where's your wallet, sir? Where's your wallet? Mike. Where's your bank card? Mike. Where's your blood donor card? Where's Mike. your discount card from Value Mike. Mike. What is it you called to get here? Huh? Answer me. Where's your wallet? Where's Mike. your wallet? Stop it. Stop it. Mike, what are you doing? Take your boots off. I'll have to let go of the bars to do that. They lace up. If you move, you're never gonna have constipation problems again. Kick them off.
step into the cell, Mr. Lenoge. He moves slowly. Keep your hands where I can see him. Check to see if he has any identification on him. I want you out of here. I want to tell you something, Anderson. Your sense of humor is entirely not I don't want to have the time or patience for this. Now you get out or I'll throw you out. Come town meeting. We're maybe going to have a change in law enforcement on a little tall. Well, town meeting's in March. This is February. Now get the hell out. that pretty well, don't you? Uh, like a diplomat. <sighs> All right. I gotta go tell Molly. You gonna leave me alone in here with him? You try to raise the state police, Machias. And, uh, you keep away from him. I should say you could count on that. Are you there? Do you read me, Machias? We've lost contact with the mainland. Peter Godzo. Peter. Mike? Mike, now what, what that fella said. That, that's the biggest crock of stuff I ever heard. Yeah, look, uh... I want you to go on back there with Hatch. We're gonna watch this guy. We're gonna do it with the buddy system. Sure. Okay, you bet. I feel I have to close the store, folks. Uh, you're welcome to take what you've got. I trust you all to settle up after the storm's over, but right now, I've got a prisoner to deal with. Did that man really kill poor old Martha? In time, we'll have the whole story, but not now. now please, Del, all of you, please, just help me do my job. Uh, I want a few of you Men to hang around for a couple of minutes. Uh, Kirk Freeman, Jack Carver, Sonny Brodigan, uh, Johnny Harriman, Billy, uh, Robbie. Machias, this is Alton Hatch on Little Tall. We have a police emergency here. Do you read, uh, Machias? Uh, come on back. Machias, this is this is Alton Hatcher, Channel One Nine. Do you read? They don't. You lost your good antenna off the roof. Try the phone. You better take the truck. You won't get 300 yards in the car. I've never seen it come down so hard and fast. Hey, Billy, would you give Molly a hand with the car seat? Sure. I'll take the uh, Island Services truck and get somebody. Give me a lift when I get things squared away. Now, uh, gotta go back to uh, Martha's. Just long enough to get it secure. Be careful. No? It was a long shot. You don't really have a load of Panama Red out there behind you at Lobster Traps, do you, Pete? Mommy, the island won't blow away, will it? No. No, honey, of course not. Come on, honey. Mike was right. You'd never make it in your car. Drive safe, Molly. Thanks, Billy.
Damn. Hey, look at him. What? What? I, uh... You've been smoking a little bit too much of what you've been selling there, Pete. Hey, shut up, Hatch. You don't talk about what you don't understand. Um, <clears throat> How's that a line there? Yeah. Way out. State police and Machias couldn't, couldn't raise anybody. Well, that doesn't really surprise me. All right, here's the duty roster, Hatch. You and Peter till 8 p.m., Kirk and Jack 8 p.m. to midnight, Robbie and Sonny midnight to 4 a.m., Billy Solms and Johnny Harriman 4 a.m. to late in the morning. After that, we'll uh, figure something else out. You okay with that? Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right now, stay alert, both of you. Later on, we're gonna have that talk you wanted, sir. Hey, Mike, uh, what do we do with him if uh, Ursula and Robbie blow the town whistle and bring everybody in? Can't very well put him in the corner of the town hall basement with a blanket and a cup of chata. I don't know. Stay here with him, I guess. What, blow away if he blows away? You wanna go home, Pete?
I'm so sorry, old girl. Tree. Robichaux's backyard from the sound. <laughs> Hope it didn't hit their porch. Jack, do you have to go back to the store today? Oh, uh, yeah. Daddy's going to guard the bad boy. Make sure he doesn't get away in a plane. <laughs> That's right, big guy. <laughs> it's a bad situation, Ann. Everybody's got to do their part. Besides, I'll be with Kirk. It's the buddy system. If you hear the whistle, you just take Buster and go. I'll go before then if you get nervous. Just bundle up, take the snowmobile. Are you sure? Uh, yeah. Fact is, the earlier you go, the better choice of bed you and Basta are apt to have. People are headed that ways already. They've seen the lights. Now, you be here or there when my watch is over. It don't matter. I'll find you. <laughs> Hey, Pete, what do you suppose this one is? Yodler's Perch. Three letters. Oh. Hmm, of course it is. Oh, this is a great program. I'll let you try it later on if you want.
was in May. What about you, Joe? I'll make it. <sighs> okay, Tess. It's getting pretty bad up there. I'm so sorry. I had. Have you got her prescriptions with you? Good. Sign in, everyone. We have to know who's here, so please sign in before you go downstairs. What could he say? Hell, everybody now at the Casco Bay knows that Peter Godso wholesales nine pounds bought for every pound of lobster. Can't say I blame him. House full of women to spot. <laughs> Question is, Robbie, how'd that fella know? Likely in business together. Why would a fella want to kill a harmless old lady like Martha Clarend unless he's high on drugs? You tell me that, Judge Kirby. That doesn't explain how he could know that Cat Withers was up in Derry for an abortion. Are there any more blankets? Robbie Beals, Henry Bright, you boys think you could go downstairs and bring up some more blankets out of that back star room, or uh, aren't you far enough along with your politicking yet? What's the matter, Ursula? All this a little too much for you, dear? Robbie, don't you think it's about time to blow the whistle and bring them in? Looks like enough of them have come in on their own. The rest can ride it out just fine. This is a bunch of foolishness as far as I'm concerned. Do you think our grandmothers and grandfathers got together at town hall when it stormed like a bunch of cave people scared of the lightning? No, they used the Methodist church. I got a picture I could show you, Stormer 27. You can point out your granddad in it if you want. Looks like he's stirring a pot of soup. Nice to know there was at least one fella in your family knew how to pitch in. Come on, Robbie. Before you go downstairs, folks. Room enough for everybody, but we need to know who we have. Hey, Ursula. Have you seen Mike? No, but I'll be able to catch his car radio if he calls in. It's not good for much else tonight anyway. Hey, take off your coat, pitch in. How's it going? Oh, we're having a ball. <laughs> hey, Ralphie. Hi. <laughs> Coffee there, Pete? Peter? That's to Peter. What? I asked if you wanted a soda or a coffee. Oh, no. I think so. You all right? Yeah, I, uh... <laughs> I was battling down from the storm all day. I guess I'm almost leaving my eyes open. <laughs> Well, hang in there. Uh, Jack Cobb and Kirk Freeman should be around in about 20 minutes or so.
Sauce. It's gone. What do you mean it's gone? The whole thing. It's gone. What happened? I don't know. Vessela, blow the whistle. Somehow, did you make him write that note? Hang himself? Did you? Evening sessions now? It's sort of fun. 
when they all finally fall asleep, I intend to track down the nearest alcoholic beverage and make it disappear. <laughs> just, just, one, just went out to use the can. And if you can't get myself a fresh cup of coffee, we'll see who's fine back then. Oh, God. Hey. Hey. He was looking at him. Like a snake. Looking at a bird. He, what did he, you do to him? Pippa, do you want to see? Hey, look, you guys! Hooray! I want to be next. Is it your turn, Donnie? All right. Donnie? Want one of these? Yeah. Oh, I wish I'd dead! He's dead! Where's Mike Anderson? Lloyd killed himself. He chopped his face right into it and act. God, it's awful. There's blood everywhere. Where's Mike? Hatch, help him get him down. Uh, I don't know as I can do that. Hatch, you can. Let me out and I'll help you, Michael Anderson. Okay. God, it's awful. It's... Robbie, 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 Lloyd, Lloyd, he, 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 he knocked his own brains right out and, and he wrote something on the side of the pump. Get and a hold of yourself, Fred. Get a damn grip. Why would Lloyd cut his head in two, Robbie? He was going to get married come spring. <laughs> Storm. Mike, who is that? Peter Godso. I recognize the boots. Ursula, say again. Say again, please, and go slow. The antenna snapped off. I can barely pick you up. Now, what's your emergency? Over. All right, Hatch, go out and see if you can raise her on the island services, CB. Find out what her problem is, then come right back. Right. Hey, you sure you're gonna be okay? Locked up, isn't he? Mike, do you have any idea what's going on here? name is happening. Wind's knocked the damned antennas over. Uh, so, uh, this is Hatch. Uh, do you read me? Come back. I'm here. I read you. Are you getting me Alton Hatcher? Uh, you're breaking up some, but uh, it's better than it was before. What's the uh, problem? Fred Andrews says Lloyd Wishman has killed himself over at the firehouse. Now, Robbie Beals and Henry Bright have gone over there to investigate, Robbie says. Oh, God, what? And you let them go there? Come back? There was no way to stop Robbie. He practically shanghaied my husband, and there could be somebody down there. Where's Mike? I want to talk to Mike. Well, I'm calling from the truck. Uh, Mike's inside with the man who... Oh, well, with the prisoner. Well, you just have to send him down there. Uh, well, we've got a little bit of a situation over here. Come back. Is Mike all right? Hatch, you come back and you tell me. 
Uh, he's fine, Mom. That's a big ten fall. Um... Uh, I've got to go. I, I'll uh, pass on the message. Uh, this is Island Service. Out. on a night like this, somebody's got to take charge, and we happen to be the ones on the scene now. Come on. Ursula said Lloyd Wishman's dead over at the firehouse. Dead? What about Ferd? Ferd's the one who found him. He said it was suicide. I think Ursula is afraid it might be murder. Mike, uh, Robbie uh, Beals took Henry Bright over there to investigate, I guess. Road's still passable, what do you think? On a four-wheel drive, yeah. Probably till midnight after that. All right, take Kirk. Go on over to the fire station. Uh, keep your eyes open. Be careful. Find Robbie and Henry. Lock the place up and bring him back here. Yeah. We can keep an eye on our new pal while you do that, can't we, Jack? Uh, I, I don't know if that's such a good idea. Yeah, well, maybe not, but right now it's the only idea. Sorry, but that's the way it is. Okay. grabs me, why don't you shoot him? There's a gun right there on the desk.
If you want to talk, follow us back to town hall. Mike sent me. He wants you down at the constables. Henry, you too. No, we've got wives and children waiting for us at town hall. If Michael and Anderson wants either of us to take a watch later, fine. But Roy right now... Brisbane's dead. And there's something written on the side of one of the fire trucks. If it's a suicide note, it's the weirdest one I ever heard of. Come on, let's get going. There's no place for discussion. I agree. Let's have our discussion at the town hall where we don't have to scream our heads off. Peter Godso dead. Peter Godso? Yeah, hung himself. He also left a weird suicide note. Mike told me to come and get you, Robbie Beals, and that's what I've come to do. Now you come on back and follow us to the star. I don't want to hear any more sass about it. Peter Godso, my God in heaven, why? I don't know, but Ursula doesn't know anything about it. We haven't been able to get through. Now I can't make you pitch in and help if you don't want to. But I can make sure when this is over that people know that you were asked and you said no. I'll go, Hatch. Thanks, Henry. All right, let's go if we're going. Did you lock up? Of course I did. What do you think I am, a damn fool? a little bit of space here. If we hear anything, we'll let you know. Move back. Go on, move back. You don't have anything else to do. Go on downstairs and watch the storm on the weather network. You're weak, but I've got your hatch. Talk slow and loud. Come back on. Robbie and Henry are fine. Just thought you might want to know that. Come back. Is Lloyd Wishman really dead, Hatch? Uh, Ursula, I don't have all the details on that yet. Uh, just tell Sandy and Carla that uh, their boys will be a while longer. Mike wants him over at the store for a little bit. Come back. Why the store? Is that man locked up? You boys be careful. Uh, Ursula, I can't hear you. You're breaking up. I'll have to try it back a little bit later. Uh, this is island service out. Mike Teller, that's his job. That's what they pay him for. Yeah. Where's your cane? You had a cane. I know you do. Where is it? Sir, how did you get to Little Tall Island? Give me what I want, and I'll go away. I saw that at Martha Clarendon's house. Did you write that? You did, didn't you? And just, what is it you want, sir? <laughs> Andre Lanoge. I take it you're French. Got a lot of people of French descent on the island. What happened with Peter Godzo? You have something to do with that? And how do you happen to know he was running pot out of his warehouse, always assuming he was? I know a lot, Constable. I know, for instance, that when you were at the University of Maine and in danger of losing your scholarship over a D in chemistry during your sophomore year, you cheated on the midterm exam. Not even your wife knows that, does she? I don't know where you get your information, but you are dead wrong on that one. I'm sure that over the years you've convinced yourself that's the truth. But right now, we both know better. You ought to tell Ralphie sometime. It would make a nice bedtime story, I think. How Daddy got through college. You never cheated on an exam in college, did you, Jack? Never went to college. Nobody bothers you for pulling D's in high school. 
They still put you in jail for assault, though, if you get caught. You were lucky last year. You and Lucian Fournier and Alex Haber. Lucky boys. Shut up. That fella just rubbed you guys the wrong way, didn't he? Had kind of a lisp, and that blonde hair, curly like a girl's hair, not to mention the way he walked, still, three against one. Pool cues. Well, hardly sporting. I'm warning you, mister. The kid lost an eye. How about that, huh? You can go and see for yourself. He lives in Lewiston. He wears a paisley eye patch his sister made him. He lies awake at night and listens to the cars on Lisbon Street and the live bands from the bottle clubs and prays to St. Andrew to bring back the sight in his left eye. Still, he had that swishy way of walking and that lisp. And you guys kind of liked the way his hair looked all around his face like it was. Although you'd never say it to each other, would you? Kind of turned you on. All right, that's enough. Kind of made you wonder what it might feel like to run your hands through it. You no. shut up, mister. I'll shut you up, I swear. Back. Take it easy. Take it easy. There's another bedtime story for a stormy night. I can see you in bed with your arm around your little boy saying, Buster, Daddy wants to tell you how he put the nasty queer man's eye out with the All end right, of now, a that's pool. Shut up. the skin. It's lucky. Six inches to the left, I'm dead. He's laughing. Here. Mike. Mike. Mike, no. Hatch. Mike, about what that guy said. It's all right. We dragged him over, Mike. All right. What's going on here? Robbie, I wish I knew. all night long we'll still be safe down here in the basement is daddy safe yeah yeah safe as can be you might not the bad man get out and hurt us will he no no i promise Just a little scratch. My daddy puts me to bed, not you. Donnie. My daddy, not you. Hey, 
I want you to go upstairs right now and you wait for your daddy. Now. I'm sorry, Molly. I guess I thought he was ready, but he's used to having his dad tuck him in. It's fine. It's probably better that he stays up. I think Buster is still running around upstairs. They can play tag and fall asleep in a corner somewhere. As long as he didn't disturb anybody. Nah, they're out like lights. I worry about Donnie sometimes. I mean, I love him, but I, I worry about him, too. Danny, they all go through stages. I mean, Don may have his unlovely moments now, but in the end, he'll be fine. I'm going to leave Robbie in the spring. I'm going to take Donnie and go back to my folks on Deer Isle. <laughs> I didn't think I'd made up my mind for sure, but I guess I have. <laughs> oh, Sandy. Going to help Billy? Yes, ma'am. See if there's any oatmeal on the very back That's shelf. Right. And tell Billy to remember the juice. Oh, I imagine he don't have any problem in the juice department, does he? <laughs> talk to you? Yeah, I guess. Why not? Billy, I just... Did you what he said? Let's talk about that. Did you go up dairy and have an abortion? I guess that's all the talk we need, isn't it? I guess that says it all. Well, don't you want to know why? Not particularly, no. It was our baby and now it's dead, I guess. Really, that's all I need to know. All right, so you asked me one. Now, I'll ask you one. What about Jenna Freeman? What about Jenna Freeman? Why do you ask about something that you already know the answer to, Kat? Maybe to wipe that little minister look off your face. Yeah, I knew. The biggest trump on the coast, and you chasing her like she's on fire, and you want to put her out. It wasn't like that at all. Then what was it like? Billy, tell me. You know, I, I don't understand it, Billy. You know, I never told you no. Never once did I tell you no, and still. God, Billy, how many times a day do you itch? What about the baby? The one I had to hear about from a complete stranger and in front of half the town. I knew who you were running with, Billy. Don't you get that? I mean, how was I supposed to trust you to do the right thing? I mean, how was I supposed to trust you at all? Do you know what it's like to find out that you're pregnant one week? And that your boyfriend is spending his afternoons with the town pump the next? Hey, that baby was half mine. And you decided to go up to Derry, and you murdered it, and it was half mine, Kat. Yes, yeah, sure. Now that it's gone, it's half yours. Come back, my child. Come back. Mike. What is that supposed to mean? It means that I'm not stupid. I mean, I know what you would have thought if I had come to you while you're still chasing after Jenna. Little bitch just got herself pregnant so I wouldn't get away. So now you've done a whole lot of my thinking for me too now, huh? You obviously haven't been doing much for yourself these days. What about the baby? The one that you murdered? How much thinking did you do for a baby, cat? Why don't you do us both a favor and Get out of here. Just go. I'm really tired of listening to you. What's he doing? Oh, you know what? Dear God. You're unfaithful and that's bad. But 
you're a coward, and that's worse. Too chicken to own up to the part of this that belongs to you. You know, I came in here because I, I thought that maybe I could save us. But there's nothing to save. You're just a stupid kid after all. What are you doing, sir? You mind telling me? No, thanks, Annie. You can keep them. Those things I always end up falling asleep listening to Schubert on my fillings anyway. Uh, why don't you give Johnny a hand, Johnny? At this time, it's one of these things to build a great concentration of snow in a very cool central area. Yeah, Mom. Channel 7 find the numbers almost impossible to believe. But Machias is already reporting a fresh wood and a half. This is without the drift factor, remember, and <laughs> zero visibility. No traffic's on the roads. Hey, what roads, right? What are they saying? Howl and blast, followed by blast and howl. Such conditions to continue through tomorrow and into tomorrow night when finally things are supposed to start quieting down. 
Power's out from Kittery to Millinocket. Coastal communities are cut off. This island, guys. Forget it. So what's the matter? I don't know. I, I just got a feeling. Really bad one. Yeah, who doesn't? Martha Clarendon's murdered. Lloyd Wishman kills himself. Storm this entry right over our heads. Who doesn't have a bad feeling? I think it's more than that. the wind it sounded like a scream that's what the wind sounds like tonight dear cat didn't come back did she no not this way i imagine they had things to discuss joanna my mother always used to say peep not at a keyhole lest you be vexed it sounded like a scream oh god Find that ridiculous. Mother, shut up! When I get these feelings, I trust them. Over the years, I've learned to trust them. Molly, I think something's happened to Peter. Why has someone come back from the store? Has Mike's... No, no, nobody's come in from that end of town since 8 o'clock. But Mike's all right. There's nothing psychic about that part of it. I picked up a couple of broken transmissions on the radio. Once it was Hatch, and once I'm pretty sure it was Mike. Saying what? Talking to who? With the antennas blown down, it's impossible to tell. Base unit to base unit, it's just voices. I imagine they're still trying to raise the status of Machias. So you haven't heard from Peter, so you, no, you can't know no, no, but Somehow I do. I do, I know it. There's a state of snow emergency. Molly, if I can get Lucian Fournier to stop fiddling with that TV and take me down to the constables on a snow machine, can you mind things here? Unless the roof falls in, all it amounts to is saying that everything is fine and Breakfast is at seven. We still need folks on the serving crew and a cleanup after. The work's mostly done for tonight, thank God. People have already started going to bed. Okay. All right, just uh, do me a favor. Give a message to Mike. Tell him to set a guard. There are plenty of men who have nothing to do tonight. Have him set a guard and get back here. Tell him his wife wants to see him. I'll give him that message. I will. All right. covered him up. He wouldn't want people to see him like this, so I covered him up. You all right there, Molly? Fine. This is going to be one to tell your grandchildren about. It already is. I covered him up because I loved him. I think it was the cane with the wolf's head that made me do it. I wouldn't touch it if I were you. I loved him and now look, I went and killed him. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle, here is my spout. Oh my God. Snowbank, Lucian. 
like that in my life. No ID of any kind? No ID, no money, no wallet, no keys, no nothing. Just no clothing tags, even not even on his blue jeans. It's just, it's just here. And that's not all. Did he say anything to you? Robbie. When you went to Martha's house, did he say anything that that he had no business knowing about? Robbie. He did, didn't he? He said something about my mother. You don't need to know. I don't think he's human. Neither do I. I don't know what he is. through. What was that all about? Did he have a cane when you saw him? Oh, yes, sir. It had a uh, silver wolf's head on the top, and it was covered in blood. I got the idea that's what he used to... to... Where's your cane, sir? Where is it now? What is it you want? Hey, somebody's pulling up. We didn't take him from Martha's, did we? He let himself be taken. Maybe he wanted to be taken. We could kill him. Nobody would have to know. Highland business is Highland business. Always has been, always will be. Dolores Claiborne, whatever she did with her husband during the eclipse, Peter got so in his, his marijuana. We'd know. I'm just saying we could. Oh, don't tell me that idea hasn't gone through your mind, Michael Anderson. Ursula? What is it, Jack? 
Please, Ursula, don't look at this. It's Peter. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, go get Mike. No. Oh no. Oh no. No. Oh my god. Oh my god. Ursula. Oh my god. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Come on. Come inside. It's warm. I don't know as you're supposed to do that, Mrs. Hatcher. That's evidence or something. Katrina, have a little broth. It'll warm you up. No, to spike that with rat poison, Mrs. Kingsbury. And a warm up, all right. <laughs> Captain Bell, you shut up your ignorant mouth. If you're treating her like she saved his damn life instead of sneaking up behind him and bashing his brains in. All right, everybody, out of here. This is not a sideshow. Now listen, Mrs. Anderson. Come on. You've known her all her life. Whatever she did or didn't do, at least she deserves a chance to breathe a little. Now, folks, Molly's right. They got this in hand. Sonny, Hopton, there's nothing you can do here. Take her down to the constable's office. Throw her murdering ass in jail. Yeah. Okay, Hopton, that's enough. I think they already got a fella in there. And she doesn't exactly look like she's gonna be breaking loose, now does she? Thank you, Mr. Stanhope. Oh, not a problem, Molly. Uh, have uh, Have you seen my mother? I uh, I think she's getting ready for bed. Good. Say there, Corey. It's just like camp, they did. We should put a bed sheet up on the wall and show cartoons. Oh, relax, Cora. It's only the Jenny clearing her throat. Oh, I you see, as bright as you could ever want it. Really? Cora, as friendly as ever. Go on, nurse. It'll warm you up. I don't think I'll ever be warm again. Again. Told you half a dozen times already. This will be the last. I promise. She said, I think the cane with the wolf's head made me do it. I wouldn't touch it if I were you. But you didn't see a cane, with or without a wolf's head. No. Mike, what are we going to do? Wait out the storm, that's all we can do. Molly wants to see you. She told me to tell you that. She said for you to set a guard and get back to her. I said that you could have as many men as you need. None of them are doing much tonight anyway. Well, that's true. Hatch, can I see you outside a minute? I uh, just want to talk to you. Be okay? Yes. What are you looking at? I'm a little teapot, short and stout. I'm a little teapot, short and stout. Here is my handle. Here is my spout. When I get all steamed up, then I shall tip me over and pour me out. He's totally crazy. It's gotta be. What do you want to talk about, Mike? I'm leaving you in charge here for a while. No, no, Mike, I wish you wouldn't do Just that. Just for a while. I want to get these women back to the town hall while the four-wheel drive will still move. Then 
I'm gonna see the Mollies, all right? Let her know I am, give Ralphie a kiss, and then I'll pack every man that looks halfway useful in the truck and bring him back here. We'll guard him in groups of threes and fours till the storm's over, in, in fives. That's what it takes to make you feel comfortable. I won't feel comfortable until he's in Derry County Jail. Yeah, I know what you mean. Cat Withers. I can't believe it, Mike. Cat wouldn't hurt Billy. Yeah, I know that too. Who's holding who prisoner here? Can you tell for sure? Oh, this is a mess. Yeah. You gonna be okay with Robbie? I'll have to be, won't I? Say hi to Melinda for me, if she's still up, and uh, tell her I'm okay. And uh, give Pip a little kiss for me. Oh, well. How long are you gonna be? 45 minutes, an hour at most. I'll come back with a truckload of wide bodies. In the meantime, you got Jack, Henry, Robbie, and Kirk Freeman. You think any of us are gonna make a difference if that guy decides to rock and roll? You think the town hall's any safer? Or anywhere else on the island? Considering Cat and Billy, no. Go on, we'll be fine. And tell your son, his friend from the market says hi. How do you know so much? What the hell do you want? Hatch! Why don't you pair up with someone and spend the time while I'm gone in here with him? The others can go out and be in the market and you can adjust the mirror so you can look back in. Hey, you don't want him to get all of us at the same time, do you? Well, it's a plan. Ladies, let's uh, get back to the town hall. Mike. Peter will be all right out there, won't he? Yeah. When this is over, we'll uh, see to him proper like we always do. Come on. Come on. Let's go. sit with her, like a guard. She, she doesn't need a guard, Andy. But she doesn't need a guard. What is all this? The Casper's heart is a place for a woman alone. She attracts too much attention, excites too much desire. We naturally wish to protect her from any embarrassment. Further embarrassment can very easily be avoided. 
anymore. Hi, Sandy. like the best place to put him. We covered him up. Andy, you and Sonny, go and uh, cover up Mrs. Stanhope, take her out, put her with Billy. Use the back door of the meeting hall. I don't want people seeing a corpse go through there if I can avoid it. Uh, what about Jonas, or boy? Uh, I seen him downstairs just getting ready to turn in. Well, let's hope he does. His wife can tell him about it in the morning. Upton Bell. Yes, sir. I want you to go downstairs, find five or six of the men that are still up. Guys who look like they could walk through half a mile of deep snow if it comes to that without having a heart attack. Tell them to come up here. Don't tell them anything except I want to talk to them, okay? Yes, sir. I don't want to die without seeing him again. I want someone to hold my hand before I go. Robbie, where are you? Where are you? I want to see my Robbie. He said he'd be here. Oh, Robbie, where are you? 
think my town's had enough of you. Now the day. You're winning as usual. Kirk, maybe a luck will change on the next hand. Mike? Is it that man? The one who picked up Ralphie at the market? It is, isn't it? Are you going to be all right? Yeah. That man is never going to see the inside of a courtroom. You know that. Maybe you should get rid of him. back inside before you freeze your tail off. Come back to us. I will. Hatch! Robbie's got a gun. Robbie? I think he's gonna shoot that guy. Get away from there. Put that down! Robbie, why? Why didn't you come to me? to die alone. Robbie! I waited for you, Robbie. I'm still waiting for you. Down in hell. I'm waiting for you. You stop. Or I'll shoot. <laughs> With that? Robbie. I'll be waiting for you in hell, Robbie. When you get there, I'm going to eat your eyes over and over, because hell is repetition. Born in sin? Come on in.
What happened? What happened, Hatch? Hatch. We have to give him what he wants. If we do that, then he'll go away. He'll leave us alone. And if we don't, if we don't. Where did he go? Out there. Into the storm. supposed to see anything in this. especially of the secret sin. And tonight I'd like to remind you, say hallelujah, that sin tastes hallelujah. sweet on the lips, but sour on the tongue, and it poisons the belly of the righteous. God bless you, but can you say amen? But the secret sin, the selfish heart that says, I need not share, I can keep it all for myself and no one will ever know. Think of that, brethren. It's easy to say, oh, I can keep oh, that dirty little secret. Oh, it's nobody's business and it won't hurt me. And then try to ignore the canker of corruption that begins to grow around it. That soul sickness that begins growing around it. Be sure your sin will find you out. And that your secrets will be known. All secrets will be known. Can you say hallelujah? Oh, brethren, can you say amen? For I ask you to behold the sting of sin and the price of vice. I ask you to behold the just end of those who would bar the door to the wandering stranger who comes oh. asking so little. <laughs> the so-called storm of the century is history in New England now. They're digging out everywhere except here on Little Tall Island, a little scrap of land off the coast of Maine and home to about 400 souls, according to the last census. About half the island's population sought shelter on the mainland when it became clear this storm was really going to hit and hit hard. But nearly all the rest, 200 men, women and young children, are gone. The exceptions are even more ominous and distressing. The United States Coast Guard has recovered four corpses so far. Two may be suicide, sources say, but the other two are almost certainly murder victims, bludgeoned to death by what was probably the same blunt object. Baffled police are asking themselves one question over and over. Where are the other residents of Little Tall Island? Where's Michael Anderson, who owned the island's market and served as Little Tall's constable? Where's 14-year-old Davy Hopewell, who was at home no. recovering from a bout of mononucleosis when the big one hit? 
Where is Robert Beals, the town manager? No one knows. There has only been one case like this before in all of American history. This is how the village of Roanoke, Virginia looked in 1587, when everyone disappeared. Every man, woman, and child. A single possible clue was found, a word carved on a tree, the word Croton. The name of a place, a misspelling, a word written in a language lost over the centuries, no one knows that either. Police continue to assure reporters that a solution will be found, but even they cannot deny one essential fact. Hope is dimming for the missing residents of Little Tall Island. Evidence suggests that most or all of the islanders spent the first and worst night of the storm here, in the basement of the Little Tall Island Town Hall. After that, no one knows. What really happened in Roanoke in 1587? And what happened here on Little Tall Island in 1989? We may never know, but I know one thing. Davy, you're too damned short to play basketball. Be sure your sin will find you out, and that your secrets will be known. All secrets will be known. Can you say hallelujah? Oh, brethren, can you say amen? For I ask you to behold the sting of sin and the price of vice. I ask you to behold the just end of those who would bar the door to the wandering stranger who comes asking so little. For the wages of lust are dust, and the wages of sin are death. For if the supplicant is turned away, and the seeker given no respite, shall not the hard-hearted be sent hence? You must be branded as one of the ungrateful. I'm sorry, we both are, aren't we, Buster? Sorry we didn't give it to you, Mr. Lamoge. Sorry we didn't give you what you wanted. You must pay. Sorry, Mr. Lenoge. Help! Daddy! No. Mom. Help! We should have given you what you wanted. Daddy! Mike? Oh, man. I just had the most awful dream. This reporter on Main Street talking about how everybody had gone. Like in this little village in Virginia a long time ago. Yeah. And no one knew where they went. And in the dream, no one knew where we went. They're all dreaming it. Do you understand? They're all dreaming what we dream. Where could 200 people disappear to? Especially on a little island cut off by a big storm. Into the ocean. What? Into the ocean. Mass suicide. If you don't give him what he wants. How could he? I don't know. But I believe that he can. What does he want, Mike? What could he possibly want? I'm sure we'll find out when he's ready.
Mike! Mike! I think the lighthouse is gonna go. Never seen a storm surge like that before in my life. Folks? Now, folks! If you go outside, stay close to the building. Remember, we've got whiteout conditions.
I hate that song. Why? I don't know, I just hate it. So how is Jack Cabin doing? Quieted down some. It's just a good thing the women got the kid out of there before he cracked. There ought to be a search party made up to look for Angela and them others. If Alton Hatcher won't lead it, you could. And if the search party doesn't come back, what then? What do we do? We send out another? Well, we can't just sit here. Sure we can, and that's just what we're gonna do. We're gonna sit here, and we're gonna wait out this storm. Pardon me, Fred, I need a coffee. I was just thinking we ought to do something. Robbie! Nothing, honey. She's just a little tired. Um, why don't you kids pick up a little now? And Mr. Hess is bring you new things to play with, okay? I'm not gonna pick up. My dad's gonna give me a doll. Donnie. Don Beals, you come back here right now. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's, uh... No man could bind him, not even with chains. And Jesus cast out the demons into a herd of pigs that ran into the ocean and drowned themselves. But before Jesus cast the demons out, he asked their names. And the, um, the thing inside said, our name is Legion. For we are many. How long do you think? 
hard to tell. It's the morning anyway by the feel of it. Snow probably pile up and clog the exhaust. All right, Sonny, you and Henry are on meat patrol. You grab the big cuts of beef plus the turkey and chicken. The best stuff's back in the freezer. Will it still be all right, Jim? Are you kidding me? Let's get going. Dark's gonna come early. We'll uh, stick with canned for this trip. We'll all come back later and get the potatoes, bread, and vegetables, and milk. Well, kids, you gotta have milk. Hey, Mike. You gonna tell them what the guy's name spells when we move the blocks around? What good would that do? I don't know. I got Mike. That gave me a chill. Me too. But for now, we're gonna keep that chill to ourselves. We've got one more night to get through. Mike. Come on. Canned goods. Slow down. Find your husband and your little boy. But the kids? Who wants to play giant stuff? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where's my mommy? I'll just peek and see if she's upstairs, shall I? Or your daddy? Yes, please, Mrs. Beals. Where's Ralphie? I just saw him. Oh, he uh, must have chased Donnie upstairs to get a donut, too. I'll send them both down. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I gotta find her, Molly. You know what it's like out there, Jack. I know she's out there. Wandering around freezing to death in a whiteout 50 yards from a building. And if you go out there, you'll be lost too. They'll hear the horn, same as in a fog at sea. You know that. I'll go spell third. Hatch said if you go oh, out there. Oh, Hatcher. Can't tell me what to do. It's my wife out there. I, just don't go past the truck. Don't go wandering, Jack. Where's Ralphie? I don't know. Didn't he come upstairs with you? Yeah, he was picking up with the rest of them. Wait, what are you saying? Ralphie's not down there? He's not with the others? I, I, I didn't see. He, cats don't... You were supposed to be watching him. I didn't see. You were supposed to be watching him! Don't you yell it, huh? One more trip. Sonny, you and Henry getting the bread and rolls. Everything off the shelf, okay. huh? You want to grab at least 100 pounds of potatoes? I'll get the milk. Come on, let's go. I want to get back as soon as we can. What the hell? Oh my God, Mike. It's Jane Kingsbury. I told you he didn't go upstairs with Donnie Beals. But, but where was Ralphie when you last saw him? Me. The man was in here. The man? The one Daddy arrested, except I don't think he's the bad man. It's because... okay. It's okay, buddy. Take him somewhere safe. Jonas? Molly? What is it?
the hell does he want? Oh, Ralphie? Ralphie, where did the man go? He must have disappeared when I turned my back. There's no thorn there for a guy to go out of Dumpkins. Shut up, Don Beals. What is this, Ralphie? It's a present. He gave me a present. That's why I don't think he's a bad man like on TV, because bad men don't give kids presents. Let Molly see, okay? Don't. Molly, don't. It's all right, Mom. Don't be scared. You mean you know what's inside this? You've already looked? Sure, we even had a game me and Mr. Knows. He said that these are special and that I should share them because they're not only for me, they're for everyone on the island. I don't think I'd open that, Mrs. Anderson, given the dreams we all had last night and the possible nature of this, this man. No, I uh, suppose you wouldn't, Reverend since he's had his filthy hands on my son twice. I could tell you 
We have to give him what he wants, do you understand? We have to give him what he wants! Angela! <sighs> oh my god. What does he want? Did he tell you? He said he'd tell us tonight. He said we're gonna have a special town meeting and you tell us then. He said if some folks don't want to go along, if they don't want to do what's best for the town, they should remember the dreams we had last night. They should remember what happened in Roanoke. That they should remember Croton. Whatever that is, take, take me inside. I'm freezing. I want to see Buster. Yeah, sure. Hatch! Any sign of Bill Timmons? Or George Kirby? Nah. No Mrs. Kingsbury either. Jane Kingsbury's dead. mean little boy put it in his pocket and took it away. But I can find it because my nose is... I'm a little teapot, short and so Sorry, honey, you shouldn't be saying that, okay? This is story time. Here is my spout. When I get out, see What's going on, Ken? And I shall just tip I don't know. I guess they want to sing. I am a little teapot. All right, folks. Just settle down. Everyone take a seat. Mike. Hey. The kids are acting funny. Funny? What do you mean? Now I know how easy it is just to get yanked out of the world. I wish I didn't, but I do. Standing there, see, watching the lighthouse. And then I was his. Shit's okay, honey. It's over. <laughs> I burn my fingers, see. They're red, but they're still cold. <sighs> Angie, do you want to go someplace more private? Because you can if you want to. No, this is for everyone. Everyone should hear. What happened to you, Angie Kava? We were watching the lighthouse fall down, and then, when I was flying backwards into the snow. At first, I thought it was somebody's idea of a joke. And then I turned around, and what had me? It wasn't a man. I wore clothes like a man and had a man's face, but it was just blackness where its eyes should have been. And when it smiled at me, when I saw it, Steve, I fainted. First time in my life. I fainted. And when I came to, I was flying. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. And ahead of us, as if it was leading us or, or it was holding us up, there was a cane. A black cane with a, a silver wolf's head. And as fast as we flew, that cane was always right ahead of us. It was the island we saw. And the storm was over. And the sun was out. But there were cops on snowmobiles everywhere. Mainland cops and state cops and game wardens too. And news people too. From the local stations and the networks. And they were all... All of them, they were looking for us. But we were gone. We were gone when nobody could ever find us. Like in the dreams. Yeah, yeah, like that. And then we stopped going up and I could feel the clouds. I mean, not cold the way you'd think snow clouds would be, but, but damp, like, like wet cotton. Oh, 
when George saw what it meant to do. And he screamed. But that thing just opened its right arm and... Ah! I was in his left and... <laughs> and then what happened, Angie? He told me he was bringing me back. Back through time and back through the storm. He was going to let me live so I could come back and tell you. Tell everybody that we have to give him what he wants when he comes tonight. If, if we have something that this man Lenoge wants, why doesn't he just take it? I don't think he can. I think we have to give it to him. The next thing I was sure of, I was stumbling around in the snow and the whiteout, and I could hear the horn, and I thought, I thought the lighthouse must not have blown down after all, because I can hear the fog horn, and I tried to go toward it, and, and then I saw someone come out of the snow, and I, I thought it was him come to take me back up in the air, except this time he was going to let me drop. But it wasn't. It was you, Jack. It was you. Why? Maybe because he knows we can keep a secret. I brought these games. What? What's going on? Buster, Heidi, Pippa, Ralphie, you okay? Pip. 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 Pip, what's wrong, honey? Pip. Pip, what's wrong, honey? Honey. What's wrong, honey? What is it? What's wrong with the kids? I don't know, but... But their eyes, there's... There's nothing there. Pip, wake up. Mom, wake up! Come on, honey, wake up. All of you, wake up! Hey, look! It's got a doggy head, a silver doggy head. How cool. A doggy. Yeah, look at the doggy head. What are they looking at? Go get Mike. Right now, go get Mike. A doggy head, yeah. See if you can get it to lay down for a while. That's a good idea. Mike! Mike, there's something wrong with the kids. Oh, Jesus. Buster! Sorry. There's something wrong with Buster! Angie, Angie, no, maybe you shouldn't. Angie! Buster! Buster? What, are, what are you doing? <laughs> Melinda, what is going on? What are they looking at? Johnny, stop! Get out of the way! Stop it! Let me go! Stop it! Stop it! No, Ralphie! Let me go! Let me go! No, Ralphie! Let me go! I want to see the doggy! I want to see the doggy! No! No! What's going on? Let me go, you bitch! Pippa! They're dead! He's killed them! No, please, no, not Sally, not my Sally! Is he? Is he? I 
doctor. You'd be lucky, Bills. The closest one's across the reach of Matthias. The wind's blowing up a hurricane. But where, where's Fred? At least he has EMS training. Well, Fred Andrews, where the hell are you? I'm here. <laughs> well, get your ass over here. Take a look at my son. Come on, people, get out of his way. That's enough, would you just shut up? Right, all right. You tell me to shut up, little man. I've taken all the crap. I've done it. Everyone, just shut up. Robbie, I don't think Don's in any immediate danger, or Pippa, or Ralphie, or any of them. Then they're not dead? I think he's sleeping. This isn't sleep. If they were asleep, we could wake them up. It's okay. I'll bring you back. Then what is it? I don't know. generator, do you think? Yeah. It's a miracle it's run as long as Taz with no one able to keep it dug out. The wind must have kept the exhaust pipe clear, but now it's shifted. In a way, that's good news. It means the storm's almost over. Main meeting hall? Yeah, sure. Mike wants that ready first. There's a couple of emergency lights in there, but that's not enough for him. Yeah, yeah, I, I just uh, caught a little bit of the latest NWS bulletin on the shortwave. Uh, they say we might see the moon tonight. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. Where's Ursula, do you know? Uh, she's downstairs with Sally and the others. Uh, sleeping the last I saw. But uh, I'm not like the kids sleeping, you know. Oh, they'll be all right. They'll wake up and be just fine. You'll see. I hope you're right, Davy. I got so. I pray you're right. Can I help? Well, you can go down to the kitchen and get the rest of the candles if you want. I'm afraid we're going to lose a generator. The respiration is normal, reflexes are normal, and if you uh, pull back an eyelid, their pupils respond to light. Oh, that's good. She's dreaming. They all are. Where's Robbie, Sandra?
baby. Go ahead. So the radio says the storm will pretty much be over by midnight. If Lenoge intends to do so. I think we can pretty much count on that. Hello, Joanna Stanhope. Glad the old bitch is dead, aren't you? I did you a favor there, didn't I? You kept a straight face, but inside you were dancing a jig. I know. I can smell it on you like musk. When this fella comes, Michael, we must give him what he wants. I've prayed on it, and this is the guidance. We'll listen Lord to him, and then we'll decide. Okay. There is a time to be stubborn, Michael, but there is also a time to let go of the reins and look toward the greater good, hard as that may be. Pride goeth before destruction, and an haughty spirit before the fall. Book of Proverbs. Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things which are God's. Book of Matthew. Stay here, please. We've got this under control. I know you believe that, Michael, but not all of us are convinced. Come in, come in, boys. Don't do that, Constable Anderson, unless you want to watch this woman burn her face off. Shall we watch it burn? No. Well, come in then. Having a little trouble with the local witch doctor, are you? Well, here's a little something you can file away for later, always assuming, of course, that there is a later. The Reverend Bobby Riggins has a couple of nieces over in Castine. Eleven and nine they are. Cute little blondes. He likes them a lot. Quite a lot. They run and hide when they see his car pull into the drive. In fact... Let her down! Unless you want to see Mrs. Stanhope's impression of the world's biggest birthday candle, I advise you not to speak again until you're invited to. Hatch, close the door. You don't like knowing, do you? Not your brand of it, no. Perhaps you don't believe me. I believe you. But the thing of it is, you see only the bad. None of the good. By and large, Constable, the good's an illusion. Little fables folks tell themselves so they can get through their days without screaming too much. I don't believe that. I know. A good boy to the last. And I think you'll find yourself on the short end this time. Your town is full of adulterers, pedophiles, thieves, gluttons, murderers, bullies, scoundrels, and covetous morons. And I know every last one of them. Born in lust, turn to dust. Born in sin, come on in. What do you want, Lenoge? Everyone on those benches an hour from now. That will do for a start. We're going to have a little unscheduled town meeting. 9 o'clock p.m. prompt. After that, well, we'll see. See what? If I'm through with this town, or just beginning. 9 o'clock, Constable. You, Hatch, her, Reverend Bobby, Town Manager Robbie. Everyone. He's the devil! He's the devil! Don't let him near me. I'll do anything, just don't let him near me again. Mike, what are we gonna do? What can we do? Listen to whatever else it is he wants. If there's another way, I just... I don't see it. Come on, let's tell Robbie. Yeah, what about the children? I'll watch them. I, I don't want to be where he is. Not no. ever again. Joe, no. 
He said everyone. That means you too. We'll uh bring the kids up, cots and all. We'll put them in the back of the meeting hall. Yeah, that'll do. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, like you, uh, I don't know what we're waiting for, but... Uh... Then why don't you sit down and wait like the rest of us, Robbie? Yeah, Robbie, sit down. I, I, I just wanted to say, Johnny, that I'm sure that we can find our way through this situation if we stick together. Like we've always stuck together on the island, Davy Hopewell, your day off from school would make quite an English composition, wouldn't it? Your father's a thief. Over the last six years or so, he's stolen more than $14,000 from that marine supply company he works for. He gambles with it. He loses. Dad? I don't know who you are, mister. You lie. You lie. Born in vice, say it twice, eh, Davy? At least twice. Well, Johnny Harriman. The fellow who burned down the planing mill across the reach there in Machias. I never did that. Of course you did. Two years ago, right after they fired you. And Kirk helped, didn't you? After all, what are friends for? Seventy men lost their jobs, but you got your payback and that's all that matters, isn't it? There, now you dope. Look at the trouble you got us into. Shut up. You boys really ought to go see that gay fella you beat up. Jack, you'd get a kick out of that paisley eye patch he wears. Please just stop it. Fella lives in one of those walk-ups on Canal Street behind Lisbon. I could give you the address. Maybe the three of you would like to go and take away the rest of his light. What do you say, Lucian? 
Want to poke out his other eye? Finish the job? Alex? Born in sin, come on in. Robbie, why did I have to die among strangers? You still haven't explained this. Why did I have to die calling for you when... All I wanted was a kiss. Put that down. Why don't you tell these people where you were and what you were doing when I died? I think your wife would be especially interested, don't you? You shut your mouth. Sandra, don't listen to her. This is all lies. Your eyes. I'm going to eat your eyes. Right out of your head. Not to worry, folks. He'll recuperate just fine, I'm sure. In the meantime, it's kind of nice to see him cowering quietly in a corner, wouldn't you say? Oh, come on now. Tell the truth and shame the devil. So now we come to it, don't we? Let me lay things out for you. Why'd you come here? Why us? Maybe there's just something about us that pisses him off. I'm here because island folk know how to pull together for the common good when they need to. And island folk know how to keep a secret. That was true on Roanoke Island in 1587, and it's true on Little Tall in 1989. Tell us. Quit dancing around it. Tell us what you want. Your children are here with you, but they're not. It's the same for me, because part of me is with them. Look. in the wind. Please don't hurt my Sally, mister. She's all I've got left now that Peter's gone. We will give you what you want if we have it to give. I swear we will. Won't we? What is it? Tell us. I've lived a long time. Thousands of years. But I'm not a god. Nor am I one of the immortals. So, now you see me as I really am. Old and sick. Dying, in fact. By the standards of your Mayfly existence, I've longed to live yet. I'll still be walking the earth when all but the freshest and greenest among you, Davy Hopewell, perhaps, or young Don Beals, have gone to your graves. But in terms of my own existence, time has grown short. You ask me what I want. No. 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 I want someone to raise and teach. 
Someone to whom I can pass on all that I've learned and all that I know. Someone who will carry on my work when I can no longer do it myself. I want a child. One of the eight sleeping back there. No. No. Never. It doesn't matter which one, all are just as likely in my eyes. Give me what I want and give it freely. And I'll go away. Never. We will never give you one of our children. Never. Hey, get him. Hey, let go of him. For God's sake, stop him. Grab him unless you wish me to drop the children and I will. Let I go. promise let you go. I will. My dog. Let go of me. Oh, my God. We gotta listen to him. No, we don't. Listening to him's the worst thing we can do. Keep still, Michael Anderson. Let him have his say. Molly. Molly. I don't think we have a choice, Mike. We have to listen. In a matter such as this, I cannot take. But I can punish, I assure you. I can punish. Give me one of the babies sleeping yonder to raise as my own, and I'll leave you in peace. He or she will see much and live long, long after the others sleeping there are gone. Give me what I want, and I'll go away. Refuse me, and the dreams you shared last night will come true. The children will fall from the sky, and the rest of you will walk into the ocean two by two. And when this storm ends, they will find this island as they found Roanoke Island, empty. Deserted. I'll give you half an hour. Discuss it. And then choose. I call this meeting to order. I think it's best if we deal with this matter as we would any piece of town business. After all, that's what this is, isn't it? Town business? Any objections to that? No. 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 Right. The item on the floor is whether or not to give to this, this thing that has come among us, one of our children. He says that if we give him what he wants, he'll go away and he'll kill us all, including the children, if we don't. Have I stated that fairly? All right. How say you then, little tall, will you speak to this? I don't see what choice we have if we believe he can do what he says he can do. Do you believe him? That's the first thing I ask myself. I do. I do. Roberta Coins has a good point there, though. How many of you believe Lenoge is telling the truth? That he can and will wipe out everyone on the island if we stand against him? Show of hands. It's not a question of what we're going to do. Not yet. It's just a question of whether or not we... I know what the question we... is. And once we start down that road, every step of the way gets easier. I know that, too. All right. I guess we believe him. That's one issue out of the way. Now, if there is any discussion of the main question... I have something I'd like to say. 
That's fine. You're a, a taxpayer, sure enough. Have on. No. He's not a man. I uh, didn't vote. But I agree with that just the same. I am your constable. The man you elected to enforce your laws. And I saw what he did to Martha Clarendon. What he did to Peter Godzo. And I've seen what he's done to our children. So I understand, as well as any of you, better than some maybe, the reality of what he's threatening. But folks, we, we, don't, we don't give our kids away to thugs. Do you understand that? We don't give away our children. So what's the choice then? What do we do, Mike? What can we do? We stand against him. Side by side, we use our will and tell him no. In one voice. We do what it says over the door we use to come into this place. We trust in God and in each other. And then, Maybe he goes away, the way storms always do when they've blown themselves out. Render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, book of Matthew. You said that to me yourself, Michael, not an hour ago. Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, book of Mark. Folks, if we give up a child, one of our own, how will we live with each other? Even if he lets us live. By the grace of God. We've all got something to hide, Mike. Right. Or maybe you're different. Oh, Jack. No. No, I'm not different. I, but, but this isn't like trying to live with a, a test you cheated on. Or the memory of someone you hurt when you were drunk. We are talking about a child. Do you understand that, Jack? Michael, Michael, suppose you were right about sending him away. Suppose we, we put our arms around each other and we gather our will and we come out with a big collective no. Suppose we do that and he just disappears. He goes back where he came from. You saw our children. Now, I, I, I don't know where he actually has them, but I have, I have no doubt that flying high above the earth is an accurate representation of it. They can fall. I believe that. All he has to do is wave that cane of his and they fall. How are we going to live with ourselves if that happens? He could be bluffing. He's not, Michael. And you know it. You saw it. You speak as though he were going to kill the child, Michael. As though it were his some kind of human sacrifice. It sounds more like an, an adoption to me. And a long life as well. If you believe him, that is. After seeing him, I actually, I guess I do. I, 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 don't, I just don't believe this. I don't believe this. Lenoge killed Martha Clarendon with his cane. He knocked the eyes right out of her head. And we are debating whether or not to give this monster a child. We might as well give away our souls. You want to know the worst thing I can think of, Michael? Suppose you're half right. Suppose we live and they die. How are we going to look at each other? How are we going to live with each other then? And how would we ever live with you? He said half an hour, people. We have ten minutes left. We can't do this. Don't, don't you understand that? We cannot do this. Don't you see? We, we, we cannot allow... I think we've heard your side of the story, Mike. You take a seat, why don't you? Sonny! Mike, maybe you should do what he say. All right. All right. You, 
You need to think about this, folks. You need to think about this very carefully. I need to go sit with Ralphie. What do you say, folks? What's your pleasure? God help us, let's give him what he wants. Let's give him what he wants and send him on his way. Even if it's Sally, better she live with a bad man than die. My God, Michael Anderson, where's your heart? They're children. We can't let him kill all eight children. Anyone else? Don't. Please. Please. Ursula, please. Ch Jack, Robbie, all of you. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't give in to this. This is damnation. All right, then let's restrict the vote. Let the parents vote, and the parents only. They're all residents. No! No, that's not fair. I raised her by myself. Oh, I've had plenty of help from folk on the island, including you and your wife, Mike, but mostly by myself. I shouldn't have to make a decision like this all by myself. What is a community for if it isn't supposed to help people when something terrible happens, when none of the choices look good? Couldn't have said it better myself, Lynn. For God's sakes, let's vote and have done. Call the question, Robbie. Let's call, call the question! question. All right, all right, fine. But you understand this. My son is not a part of this. All right? Do you understand that? My son is not a part of this obscenity. Yes, he is. We have never shirked our duty, Michael. We've taken part in all the life on this island, and we will take part in this as well. You don't mean that, Molly. You can't mean that. I do, Mike. Well, well, screw this. Screw all of you. I am taking my son and leaving. You can't leave. We're in this Damn together. Let go of me. Mike, oh, stop it. Mike, you grab him. This patch. Stop it. You're hurting him. That's enough. Mike, Mike. Michael, calm down. Calm down. Michael. Michael. Easy. Easy. All right. Okay. I'll sit. Michael. Mike, are you... Get away from me. Why can I shut, shut up? Ahead. had a chance to think about it, you'll understand. He'll come around. It's the only thing we can do. What else is there? Die for a principle, every one of us? You have to think about it. And if it's Pipple, the notion's up taking. <clears throat> well, then I'll tell myself that she died as an infant. That it was crib death, something we couldn't help but foresee. And I'll believe it. Melinda and I will, will both believe it. Oye, oye, oye. The question has been called. Do we or do we not give Mr. Lenoge what he wants pursuant to his promise to leave us in peace? How say you, little tall? All those in favor signify in the usual way. I'm Harry's father. 
And I vote yes. I'm his mother and so do I. I vote yes. Carl and I vote yes. Yes. We have no choice. No choice. I vote yes. It's the only way. Got to. To lose one in life is better than to lose them all in death. I vote yes. Those opposed. I count all in favor save one. The motion is carried. Have you reached your decision? We have. We voted in favor. Excellent. You've made the right choice. done a hard thing, my friends. And despite what the constable may have told you, it's also a good thing, the right thing, the only thing, really, that loving, responsible people could have done under the circumstances. These are weirding stones. They were old when the world was young and were used to decide great issues long before Atlantis sank into the African Ocean. There are seven white stones in here, and one black one. You're eager for me to be gone, I know, and I don't blame you. Will one parent of each child come forward, please? Let's finish this. It's perfectly simple. You each draw a stone from the bag. Do not reveal your stone until all have been chosen. The child whose parent draws the black stone comes with me. To live long, see far, and know much. Mrs. Robichaud. Jill, will you start us off? Go on, honey. Do it. Mrs. Hatcher. I can't, Abby, you... Go ahead, draw.
Ladies? You go first, Molly. No, you. Please. Well, my friends, so far it's gone very well. Now then, who has the courage to show first? To put fear aside and let sweet relief rush in to take its place? Come, come. Have you not heard the gods punish the faint of heart? Buster, I love you. Oh, it's Sandra. Let's see. I can't, Robbie. I can't. I know it's Donnie. I know it's him. I've never been lucky. White. Mrs. Robichaud. Jill. I can't. I thought I could go through with it, but I can't. I'm sorry. Mr. Bright, Henry, would you favor us? Mama's coming, sweetheart. Mama's coming, sweetheart. Mike. No. This can't be. You can't have my son. I feel your grief keenly, Molly. But you agreed to the terms. I'm sorry. No, you fixed it. You fixed it somehow. I assure you that's not so. The game was, as you'd say, straight. And since I believe that long, drawn-out farewells only add to the pain... No, you can't do that! Ladies and gentlemen, residents of Little Tall, I thank you for your attention to my needs, and I now declare this meeting at an end with a suggestion. 
that the less you say to the outside world about our arrangement, the more happy you are apt to be. Although, of course, such matters are ultimately up to you. With that, I'll take my new protege and leave you to your thoughts. May they be happy ones. Touch me again, any of you, any of you. Oh. Mike haven't slept together for how long? Five months. The last time was the night before the big storm. The uh, storm of the century. When you lost your son. Correct. When I lost my son. And Mike blames you for that loss. I think he's going to leave me. You're very afraid of that, aren't you? I think he's running out of ways to stay. Do you understand what I mean by that? Molly, tell me again what happened to Ralphie. <sighs> Why, we've been through this. I mean, what, what good would it do? He's gone. I mean, what good can that do? It was the second day we were in the town hall where we took shelter. The storm, you know, you can't believe how bad it was. You know, I was here. Yes, Lisa, you were here on the mainland. It's different on the island. Everything is different on the island. It was a mistake for any of us to go out, especially the children. We underestimated the storm. Several people wandered away and were lost. Ralphie was one of them. 
Angie Carver found her way back, but none of the others ever did. Mike? You got something to say, you better say it. The ferry leaves in 20 minutes, and I don't intend to miss it. Where are you going? Mike, don't. Don't leave. Would it do you any good to tell you that I haven't had a good night's sleep in, since February? Would it do you any good to tell you that maybe we might have been wrong? I've got to go, Hatch. Robbie says to tell you that uh, the constable job's yours again whenever you want it. All you have to do is ask. No, I'm done here. I've tried till I can't try anymore. Molly needs you. Have you seen the way she is now? Have you even looked? You look for me, okay? Yeah. Well, Linda's not doing very well either. She takes a lot of tranquilizers. I think she might be hooked on him. That's too bad. But you've got your daughter, at least. You may not sleep so well. But you can go into Pippa's bedroom and watch her sleep. Any night you want. Can't you? into the whiteout. Maybe he was with Bill Timmons, the gas station man. I, I'd like to think so, that he, he wasn't alone at the end. They must have lost their bearings completely and gone into the sea. They were the two who were never found. There's a great deal of this story you haven't told me, isn't there? Until you do, until you tell someone, it will just keep festering. It'll fester no matter what I do. Some wounds can never be cleaned out. I didn't understand that before, but now I do. Molly, why does your husband hate you so? What really happened to Ralphie? He wandered away. But people do, you know, they get lost. That's what happened to Ralphie. He was lost in the whiteout. He was lost in the storm. years ago that was. I just gassed up my car and left on the ferry. I've never been back. cared about was that I had to wear sunglasses every night when the sun went down, that every mile on the odometer was a mile further away from Little Tall. Mal got the bank accounts, the insurance, the store, the house, and a little piece of land we had in Vanceboro. I got the blazer and a peace of mind. What was left of it? I wound up here, back on the water again. 
Ironic, I guess, huh? But it's different, somehow, the Pacific. It doesn't have the hard glow when the days start to run down towards winter. And it doesn't have the same memories. I went back to school, got a degree in law enforcement and another one in accountancy. Thought about going after a law degree, and then thought again. Started out keeping store in an island off the coast of Maine and wound up a federal marshal. How do you like that? Sometimes the island seems very far away, and Andre Leno is just a bad dream I had. Sometimes, when I wake up late at night, trying not to scream, it seems very close. And as I said way back at the beginning, I keep in touch. Linda Hatcher died in October of 1990. Local paper said it was a heart attack. Ursula Godzo sent me the clipping. I don't know if there was more to it or not. 35's young for your pump to quit, but it happens. Molly and Hatch married in May of 1993. Ursula sent me that clipping too. From what I hear, they've been good for each other. I'm glad. I wish them every happiness. I mean that with all my heart. Not everyone on Little Tall's been so lucky. Jack and Angie Carver divorced about two months after Hatch and Molly got married. Jack fought for custody of Buster. He was pretty bitter, I guess, and lost. He moved off the island to Lewiston, rented a room, killed himself there one night, late in the summer of 94. He left what little he had to a fellow named Harmon Brodsky, who lost an eye in a barroom fight back in the 80s. Robbie Beals rebuilt the old fish house on the town dock and hired Kirk Freeman to work there. Kirk said Robbie's wife, Sandra, came down there early one morning in the spring of 1996, dressed in a yellow slicker and red boots, and told him she wanted to go for a little row. Kirk made her put on a life preserver. He said he didn't like the way she looked. He said it was like she was dreaming with her eyes open. But what could he do? It was a mild morning, no wind, not much of a swell, and she was the boss's wife. They found the boat, but they didn't find Sandy. It was one strange thing, but they didn't know what to make of it. There were people on the island who maybe could have helped them a little there, but island folks can keep a secret. We kept our share back in 1989, and the people who live there can keep them still. This is a cash and carry world. Pay as you go. Sometimes you only have to pay little. Mostly, it's a lot. Once in a while, it's all you have. That's a lesson I thought I learned nine years ago on Little Tall during the storm of the century. <laughs> But I was wrong. I only started learning during the big blow. I finished just last week.
I could have written Molly and told her. I thought about it. I even prayed about it. When every choice hurts, how do you tell which one's the right one? In the end, I kept silent. Sometimes, mostly late at night when I can't sleep. I think that was wrong. But in daylight, I know better. In daylight, I know better. <laughs>